We've all heard these parables so many times that I think you can run the risk of missing Jesus' point. So I'd like to read to you again the beginning of tonight's gospel. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawn here to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. The them to whom Jesus addresses the parable are the complainers, the leaders who do not want sinners to have a place in Jesus' life and ministry. The parable is not just a word of mercy to sinners, but the parable is a challenge and a judgment to anyone who lacks mercy. The image of a shepherd looking for one lost sheep, the woman searching for her one lost home, are meant to challenge these religious leaders out of their righteousness, their unwillingness to accept a God whose mercy and hospitality can and does extend to all people. From the earliest experiences of Israel in the desert that we heard in our first reading, through the amazing mercy that Paul acknowledges in our second reading, God has always been first and foremost a God of mercy, a God of patience, a God who is willing to seek out the lost. Tonight, Jesus, in his parable, is challenging the leaders of his time. Do you dare to create a God of your own name? Do you dare to create a God of your own rules, of your own narrowness, of your own ignorance? Or do you accept God as God is? It is hard to believe that nine years ago today we spent our most of the day trying to figure out just but it happened. Nearly a decade since that unforgettable day that we now say changed everything. And as we saw yesterday, our civic remembrances of 9 11 usually involved the reading of the names of those who had died. Given the spectrum of our individual religions and our individual beliefs, this seems to be the one thing that we all can do. In fact, we often repeat a slogan to focus our attention. We say that we will never forget. But if we're honest with ourselves, we know that we often do forget. Through our own harm, we do not always learn the lessons from history. Our memory is very powerful and is simply amazing. At the same time, we also have to admit how selective we are when it comes to those amazing moments. Just consider how easily we forget and choose to go on with a better way of living. We can forget the neighbor and suffering, or fail to remember the neighbor and pain. We can ignore injustices and walk right by human suffering. But if somebody cuts us off or fails to give us a compliment, we can hold on to it for years and years. We can even find a strange comfort in our hatred. We even feel justified in our own wrath and start to believe that God is certainly on our side. Those 19 heretics were driven by this same illusion. Despite the clear teachings of their religion and its prohibition against any harm, they made an idol of their own misguided understanding. Much like the faithfulness we heard in our first reading, they had crafted the God and the image of themselves. We need to see and we need to understand that the moment religion, our school, preaches to others and excludes ourselves, it is the end of faith and the beginning of tyranny. If it leads us to believe that we can accuse others and excuse ourselves, it is much more than just being wrong. It is simply misguided. 
Catholicism redefined to our understanding is no longer Catholicism. Christianity redefined to our own understanding is no longer Christianity. We may struggle with it, and the more that we do struggle with it, the better off we are, the better off our church is. So what kind of world do you really want to live in? But the choice is ours. And whether we know it or not, our very action, our very words, is creating the world in which we choose to live in. I know this can all sound rather preachy, and even judgmental, and I guess at some level I probably want it to be. Because we need to remember that all too well what happens when faith becomes something about us rather than God. When our standards become higher than those of God. That is something more than anything else that we should never forget.